This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 2021 HP NV14. And you know, you might feel sometimes like you know, laptops and technology are stagnating, not moving along, but then you look at something like this and you realize, you know, things are actually looking up. This is a 14 inch, obviously 14 inch Ultrabook, not very big, right? Aluminum chassis, that's all nice, that's all good, that's an NV for you. But this brings some of the goodness of what the NV15 was down to a pretty compact portable size. So we have Intel 11th gen CPUs inside the Ultrabook CPUs, and we have NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti Max Q graphics inside. So it's quite powerful for something this compact, and the battery life isn't bad either. So hey, that's not too bad. Well, how's the rest of it? We're going to look at it now. So honestly, it's hard to fault the Envy line, and there's a reason why it's popular. It's that premium without the psycho price tag kind of laptop. You have a definite chill, low-key design aluminum chassis that I like, you know, no dated funny angles and bling that might not look good a couple of years from now. It's all good. The seams are all nice and flush on it. There's no creaking. It's pretty solid. The stuff that you would expect for around $1,000 man up for it. And in fact, our configuration with the NVIDIA dedicated graphics, a Core i5, which isn't a slouch, is about 10% slower than the Core i7, and 16 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD right now is going for about 1250 on Amazon and Best Buy. Now, if you're building your own on HP's website and you say, oh man, I want that Core i7, well, you can get that. It's like $50 more. In fact, on HP's website, that also takes you from 8 to 16 gigs, but our Best Buy and Amazon model is a 16 gig unit already. The only thing that I would complain about a bit is the, the display. This is a traditional clamshell laptop. It's not a convertible like the HP Spectre X360. The display doesn't go that far back. Some of you might want to tilt it a little further back, and I, I don't know why. I think it's part of the, the whole lid design where the lid lifts up the bottom a little bit. And yeah, anyway. Small thing to complain about there. The keyboard and trackpad on this are both pleasant. The um, drawback with HP and their silvery laptops is that it's a little hard to see the key masking. Once you put the backlighting on, which is pretty bright and white, it actually becomes easier. But in that kind of middling light, it's a, a little indistinct looking. The tactile feel is very nice on this. There's some spring and return and all that sort of thing. It's not ultra shallow or anything like that. I like it pretty well. And I also appreciate the fact that the power button may be embedded in the keyboard, but it is not the uppermost right key where the delete key usually is. So none of that whoopsie, oh, I want to hit the Dell key and I turned off the laptop instead. The trackpad is Microsoft Precision, HP's usual large trackpad, a little on the slippery side, but I think most people will find it just fine. By the way, the very lowest end model that's on HP's website, that's like $1,069 US dollars right now, that's the only one that does not have the dedicated graphics inside. It just says Intel Iris XE graphics. So keep that in mind. If you see it at a super, super cheap price, make sure if you do want the dedicated graphics on it. Uh, by the way, you still get the same dual fan design cooling even if you don't have the dedicated graphics. So that one must run super duper chill. So you do have your choice of an Intel Core i5 or a Core i7 CPU, Intel 11th Gen Tiger Lake, and those are 15 watt Ultrabook CPUs inside, and Intel Iris Xe graphics that's switchable via Optimus with the NVIDIA dedicated graphics on board. So fairly powerful machine. And given the fact that it does have dual fans and it's a thin chassis, but not like crazy thin, it, the cooling on this is pretty effective. So that's the other thing that's nice to see. Often when we shrink these things down, it gets to be tougher. but. I, as we've seen with the razor blade stealth and the, the very few others that have this level of GPU inside in a smallish package, it is doable now. For RAM, it's soldered on board as it is with most Ultrabooks. You can get it with 8 or 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and it has one M.2 SSD slot so that is upgradable and you can get it anywhere from 256 gigs, which our $1,250 model has, all the way up to 2 terabytes if you're buying to order on HP's website. Intel Wi-Fi 6 is standard, the AX201 card, and we have a fingerprint scanner that's pretty obviously embedded in the keyboard there. It has its own dedicated key. There is no Windows Hello IR camera. Now, HP says the display on this is calibrated at the factory and it has a delta E of two or less, which is pretty good. And believe me, they didn't go for less because it's pretty decent calibration. It's not super duper is wonderful spot on, but it's good enough probably for most people. And if you're really serious about your graphics work, then you probably have a colorimeter anyway, or you know to borrow one from work. 
My one complaint about this display is the same as with almost all of HP's higher-end laptops. The glossy display is so glassy looking. So there's a lot of reflectance. And the default wallpaper that it's shipped with, which already has a kind of dark and dithered look, didn't help it any. So if you boot it up and you see a sad looking wallpaper there, change it before you make your judgment on the display. But glare is a reality with this one. It's available with full HD plus 1920 by 1200, and you can get 400 nits either way, but touch or non-touch are the two options. No pen support with this one. We have the touch screen option on ours. Uh, the rest of the metrics you can see on screen, they're pretty good. The contrast is pretty decent on this. The color gamut is pretty nice in this price range as well. So it's a pleasant display, and if you're looking to get into some photo or video editing and all that sort of thing, the display is up to the job, certainly, and it looks very nice if you're consuming media on it. For a relatively compact laptop, the port situation is pretty good. Since this is Intel 11th Gen, we have one Thunderbolt 4 port, which is also USB-C, so that handles display out, Thunderbolt docks, as well as USB-C docks, so that's good to see. We have two USB-A 3.1 ports, those are 5 gigabit per second, HDMI 2.0B headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot. So no, no dongle life here. In that way, it's a little more appealing than the Spectre X360, maybe. And though it's not per se a gaming laptop, most obviously I know some of you do like to game a little bit, and that GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q will get you there with older games or less demanding games or with your settings put to low. I mean, I wouldn't pick this one for Cyberpunk 2077 maybe, but if you're looking at playing something like Fortnite, absolutely not a problem actually, or even Overwatch for this one here. And it's a 60 hertz refresh display, so you're not looking to push more frames than that unless you're using a fancy external monitor anyway. So yeah, you can, it's got a little bit of game too, so that's pretty nice as well as really being designed for creators who are doing a bit more graphically speaking. Maybe you're getting into rendering, Blender, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So battery life, is, you know, sometimes dedicated graphics, not so good. Well, we have NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics here, and these days Optimus does a pretty good job of turning off the dedicated GPU when you don't really need it. 63 watt hour battery and 135 watt charger, proprietary barrel pin style connector, HP's usual sort of bigger charger here because it's beyond the USB-C power delivery limit of 100 watts required. And battery life on this is actually pretty good. And so are charging times. It can charge fully in less than two hours from empty to full. Yay that. But uh, in mixed productivity use, a little streaming video, a little bit of Photoshop, your usual office, that sort of thing with a display set at 200 nits, we were getting eight to nine hours. Now, if you're going to do Premiere or anything that's going to involve the DGPU, do expect the battery run times to go down a bit from that. But yeah, it's not bad at all. As per usual with HP, we have Bang & Olufsen branded stereo speakers, and they're pretty decent. The volume is pretty good on this. Don't expect an amazing bass or something like that, but not too bad at all. To get inside, you remove four Torx T5 screws. The ones at the front are shorter. Remember that when you put it back together again. And it's mostly easy to get off. You use like a suction cup or something near the front end. It pops up, but the plastic clips in these back corners are really tenacious. So you're just going to have to have a little patience and use a guitar pick or a pry tool. The back edge, as you can see, extends down the vent area right there. And the underside looks like that. Metal. And here are our internals with two pretty good sized fans here since we have that NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti Max cuticle as well as the CPU here. So nice, fairly beefy design given the fact this is a compact 14 inch laptop. The M.2 SSD is under this copper heat sink so you can upgrade that if you want to. And the Wi-Fi card is soldered on board here so you're not going to be able to upgrade that yourself. That is located over here. And RAM of course is soldered on board and your choice is 8 or 16 gigs. As per usual with most laptops these days, the stereo speakers flank the battery in the front here and they are down firing towards the front of the laptop. So that's the HP Envy 14 for 2021. This Spectre X360 might envy it, get it for its horsepower. Granted, it's not a convertible. It's not as thin and light as a Spectre X360 and there's no OLED 4K option, but then this one's a lot less expensive. And again, in this price range, this is gonna be one of the ones to beat for those of you who are looking for some graphics um, in a nice kind of classy, well-built machine. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. Oh, and thumbs up if you like the vid.